Hello everyone, welcome back to a new episode of Bug Fables. Last time we left off, we cleared up quite a few of our last quests. And now we just have In Search of Something with Elam and Lost Books to finish, which... Who knows if we'll even finish Lost Books. I, I only know where one other Lost Book is, and there's definitely many, many more spots left on that shelf. So, at the start of this video, I wanted to explain something that I did. Phase Shift commented that I should probably look at the bestiary entry for the Wasp King. When I was looking, I don't actually think I saw the bestiary entry for the Wasp King. He may be warning me for when I have a fight with the Wasp King again to make sure that I um, go ahead and spy on them so I can get the information, but I looked through everything here and I basically just picked out all the ones that were interesting. So I have a neat little list here. These are ones that are were either funny or the examine text was funny or it gave uh, lore about the world. So I have a neat little list of these. There's not too terribly many of them, but there are a couple that I was like, "Heh, that's pretty neat. I want to point that one out. So we'll look at those. I'll probably look at a few at the end of this episode and we may do a few in each episode until we get to the end, basically. I thought it would just be a neat way to include some of those in here since I have been ignoring the bestiary. So why I came in here is I have some discoveries, pretty sure. Uh, this time you have 47, last time you had 41. So I give enough for the next tier. A crystal berry. So that brings us to two crystal berries, not quite enough to get anything else from the crystal berry shop, but still pretty good nonetheless. So now what we want to do is we want to go speak to our good friend Elam or Elam or however you would say his name. And he's over there by the tunnel that leads to the Golden Settlement. So I will just meet everyone over there. Oh, wait. Actually, I don't know the last time I spoke to Artis. I don't think we have anything new, but I've walked in here before and didn't think I had anything new. And it turns out I did. So let's just make sure. Good job. Okay, Carmina. So Carmina counted, yeah, because they weren't a bounty. Too challenging? You deserve a reward. Here. Random start. The equipped ally starts battle with a random status buff slash condition. That's wacky. Huh. Interesting. I was- I, I completely forgot about Carmina. That makes a ton of sense, actually. Well, I was gonna cut the walk out uh, that we used to get over there, but it's- Really not that far. I do have Bug Me Not on, right? Yes. So this character is with us. We picked him up last time and subsequently ignored her quest. Or his quest. I don't really know. And we were like, yeah, we're gonna go do this thing with Venus and feed her and have a dinner and it's gonna be a heartfelt moment that you're just awkwardly going to be there for. But this time we're actually gonna follow up on this quest as we platform across this ice. I don't think I've pointed it out before. But I've got to point it out now. I'm really, really happy that... Excuse me? Icicle? Oh, am I too close to the wall? Yeah, that's what it was. It was hitting, like, the like invisible wall on the barrier of the screen. I'm really happy that they didn't put ice physics on the icicles. So they work good. They work well as platforms. Here goes. Um, Hermit, dude. Is this what you were looking for? A bug. My request led you to another bug. In hindsight, probably not what a hermit wants. Hello, I've heard of your quest that you've been here for so long. And you will try to make me see the bright side like all others. Oh, not at all. I think this place is lovely. If it's kept you entertained, it must be full of hidden wonders. Would you mind if I stayed and looked around? If that's okay. You look at this world in a wholly different way, don't you? You're not searching for the meaning in things. I think things happens just because. I love to admire the results. I would like you to stay. Call me Tex... Tex-she? Tex-she? Tex Tex I think it'd be like tex -she. It'll be my pleasure. Explorers. Y yes Thank you. I never expected you to go this far for me. Um, me neither. Did we just play matchmakers? Yeah, I was about to say, are they, uh, are they hooking up? 
Not a lot to do in a cave like this once she explores everything else, I guess. Enjoy your marriage. I'll come to the ceremony whenever it happens. As long as everyone's happy. This is the one worldly thing I have left. A lore book. Were you just sitting here reading that this whole time? It is from my younger days. I'm glad I kept it. If only to give it to you. I must thank you too, although I have nothing to give. Don't worry about it. We'll leave you to your introspection and stuff. If you ever need us, just post in the town's quest board. Huh. Joking aside, that was kind of a sweet quest, actually. I didn't think they would just arrive here and be like, Oh, I am in love. Or at the very least him. I mean, has she even consented to this relationship? Elam's been here so long, but there's a flower he never noticed. Tech she's got a good eye for small things in this world. It's really refreshing. I'm blessed you made us meet. I mean, he, she, V said that we play matchmakers, but I don't actually get from them that they're actually in love or want to seek a relationship together or anything. It seems more like they're just two like-minded people that want to hang out. So, I will not ship them yet. Unless we have a follow-up quest where it's like, I love you and we have this dramatic arc where we find out that we love each other after spending so much time together. Alright, so... That was one of our last quests. We got the lost book that we need, so... I guess one of the last things to do now is follow up on our main quest. After we go turn this book in, of course. Feels really weird to be here. I honestly hope that it's not the last quest, and to be completely honest, I think we still have a fair amount of to go, because if we look at our bestiary, since I was just looking at that, we still have quite a few blanks here, and unless there's a lot of hidden bosses in this game, I think we're probably in for a little bit more than just a slight stroll into the final area of the game. Oh hey, it's you. Did you find any books? Yeah. Ah, wonderful. It's one of ours, yes. I'll put it on the shelf, so check it out whenever. The Deadlands. The gigantic feral beasts that surround Bagaria. It's uncanny how we've gotten used to them. Elizant the first braved the Deadlands, riddled with those creatures to ensure our peace. Although Bagaria is protected by the Mother Crystal, I struggle to write when I think of what would happen should that crystal lose its power. Hmm. I wonder what it's talking about outside. Is it specifically talking about people? as was hinted at by the um, Assault on Rubber Prison conversation, where there's a giant metal place where giants live? Or could it just be talking about squirrels or dogs or anything else? And what is this crystal that landed over this area to make it like this, I wonder? There must be something significant to it, right? Or, it, I don't know. Maybe we'll find out. So... I just wanted to come in here to get a refresher on what we were actually doing. Submarine seems to work just fine to everyone's release. It's time to reclaim the rubber prison from the wasps. Alright, well, I actually think the fastest way to get back to our sub is to go to Riz's place. Because we found out last time that the submarine does actually go there, so... Or rather yet, the submarine does actually appear there, I guess is a better way of putting it. Regardless, we can get back to the lake from there. Yeah, take me, please. Oh, wait, actually. I should probably cook up some food, huh? Yeah, I should definitely do that. And I have the, I have the berries to do it. One sec, I'll meet you back here after I cook everything. Alright, here we are, back over here. I went ahead and made some crispy donuts. And I kept the Queen's Dinner with me, obviously need the Danger Spud in case we have to ever poison Kabu. And yeah, all that's good. I was also looking at my notes and realized I still have Dark Cherry plus Explosive. And I was thinking about looking into that, like potentially a Spicy Bomb with that, but I also realized I have the Abomb Ination, which has Bomb in the name. And then there's a lot of other bombs, so it's pretty vague. I'm not sure which one 
I should go with in that particular instance. And I don't want to waste a Dark Cherry, which... I mean, we could buy more from that one character, I believe, but you would have to grind to do it, so I'm not in too much of a hurry to just waste one of those. Maybe someone will give us better recipes at some point. Get out of here, Striders. I do have... yeah. Just making sure. Because I don't feel like dealing with your ass. What's up here? Nothing? Can we even go up there? No. So, one other thing I did want to do is... I never fully explored this area, as it were. Like, for example, what is that? Is that the so-called rubber prison? Oh no, that's the termite capital. Never mind, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I guess it makes sense that that's the termite capital. And this is where we came out when we were over there. I just wanted to check out the rest of this to make sure there wasn't anything else hidden here, kind of like how the peacock spider was a little hidden. Just curious. Hello, wasp trooper. What are you doing over here? Can I do anything with the pop can? No. Okay, well... I should probably be heading towards the wasp troopers, right? I mean, that makes a lot of sense to me. I think we've looked at just about everything here, and I didn't really see anything. So I believe that's all in the middle lake. Alright, well... I can only assume this is where we have to go. Nice touch to put the wasp troopers over here. So, one other thing I did want to mention is... I'm probably going to be recording multiple episodes in this session. So, if there's any comments telling me about something that I'm missing or anything, I probably won't see it for at least two, maybe three episodes. Because I have quite a bit of free time today, so I'm going to be recording a lot. So, if I feel like I'm about to get to the end game point, I might hold off and wait till I can start reading some comments to uh, record again. But, yeah. We made it. I trust the termites, but I'm glad to leave the submarine. Your fears aside, could you tell us a bit more about Rubber Prison? It's new to us. Oh, I know this one. It's the prison where they put all the bad bugs. Things got that bad after Elizant went to sleep? So it seems. It's quite the secure facility, yes? The wasp taking over is quite troublesome. Meh, we'll just snoop around and beat them up. It's what we do. Eh, that's a good plan. Let's go, team. We must clear the way for the others. Alright, so... This is an area. First of all, I can. Is there any reason to in this way? No. I see a couple of platforms to hop across over here. Surprised we can make that jump, actually. It looks like kind of a long jump, but sure enough, we can. Hey, buddy. What happens if I destroy this? What happens if I destroy you? Oh, you're... Are you new? Huh. No, you're still ID'd, so... You're not a new type of enemy. Oh well, let's just go ahead and get two attacks, shall we? This one's only gonna do three damage, I believe. Or two damage. Hmm. Probably go ahead and just Frigid Coffin, the one in the back. BXB. There we go. And V, go ahead and do a good old bop. Oh wait, yeah, they have two defense. Ah, so yeah, so that's what that, I was, I was right. I wasn't completely right because I was kind of assuming we would just have a passive poison effect on you now, but no, you just have a poison bite for three TP. That's kind of useful actually. I'm glad I got that. I no longer have to put the poison on V. Assuming that the chomper can actually pierce the defense enough to hurt an enemy, it would be better just to get Chomper to do it. I'm calling you Chomper. I should call you Chom uh, Quasi. Okay, Heavy Strike, since we're full on TP anyway. And we're going to get some TP back at the end of this fight. Hmm. You two don't do enough damage otherwise. So I think I'm just going to have you do that. I suppose... Okay, now V can kill it though. There we are. We're surprisingly getting 3 XP. Each. Wasn't expecting that. Alright, what's behind here, huh? The prison's gates are all controlled by the gray switches. Please ask management for access to prevent getting trapped inside. 
Oh yeah, what if I just dug under it? No. I guess since the spikes are coming up out of the floor, I can't just dig under it. Darn. Foiled again. Alright, well, what do you do? You just make that rise, huh? Well. What are we supposed to be doing, then? Those cages hanging are kind of reminiscent. Oh, yeah, this lever. Oh, okay, I see what I need to be doing. Okay, that's... interesting. So, can we do this? I was thinking I was gonna have to go all the way around for a second, and everybody probably would have laughed if I had done that, but... I can do that instead. Don't remember if I hit that save point or not before I came walking in here, but... Oh well. You win some, you lose some. Oh, another one of you, huh? Hello. I mean, we've fought these enemies before, but since they're, like, a powered-up variant, seemingly, I, th I think I should show these. At least the first few. If there's too terribly many of them, yeah, we won't be showing it. But for now, we can. I don't remember. Do you have two defense? No, you have one defense. But now you probably have two defense. Oh, well. I'm just gonna do nothing. Okay, so that's a continuous attack. Good to know. Oh yeah, that's the other thing I did uh, off-camera when I was cooking. I went ahead and redid my charm, because... Depending on how long this area is, I didn't want my charm to run out while I was in the area. So I just thought I would go ahead and reset it. Even, even though it hadn't ran out yet, because... We've had that particular charm for quite a bit now, so... Just being safe. Whoops. I screwed that up. And you can't do damage? Yeah. Okay, so... You get an attack because of my incompetence. Never mind, Lace just gonna stab you in the ass with a spike. There we go. Oh wow, you're worth a lot of XP, actually. Thank you very much. And you dropped me a leaf. How kind. Alright, well do we need a key card? Only authorized ant personnel allowed. Peace provide ID. Okay, that actually works. <laughs> Explorers and visitors, do not lose your permit. Otherwise, we must assume you are a prisoner. Have a good day. Yeah, I didn't actually think that was going to work, but sure enough, here we are. I'm secretly a genius. Huh. So that's a wasp bomber hanging out up there. What are we going to do about you, bomber? Hmm. Well, we need to get past you, obviously. No, you're not hitting me with those. Quit that. So, this is the... We haven't fought one of you since the Ultimax fight, either. Now that I think about it, I guess it wasn't long ago that we actually fought these enemies. Six damage, and you're about to fall. Uh, that doesn't actually make you fall. So I need more damage. Frigid Coffin it is. Because one more should make them fall down. Oh. Yeah, I forgot about the whole freezing part. Oh well, let's just do nothing. They're frozen and Kabu can finish them off. Boom. That was a pretty quick fight. No problemo. Alright, so I assume we need to use this for something. I let go because I was like, huh, I'm not actually close enough to the, uh, wind to get to where I need to go. I did not mean for you to walk outside the room. Hop. Okay, we can't actually make that jump. So we're gonna have to bubble it. Bubble away. I wasn't even in the spikes, thank you. Come on, what's with that? I mean, I guess it kind of came up a little bit, but... So we gotta do this... Huh. How are we actually supposed to make that? Is that just meant to get us back? Oh, wait. Oh, okay, never mind. I see what we're supposed to do here. I left that thinking I had to get in from the top, but no, I don't I don't have to get in from the top. I just have to dig under it with Kabu. Although I guess getting in from the top also works. 
Wait. Okay, we walk in from this side. I can't quite see because of the prison walls. Well, I got a prison key. Sounds pretty useful to me, considering we're in a prison. What do you do over here, you cheeky little lever? What does that accomplish? I have no idea. We're gonna have to listen to V struggle for a little bit longer as I attempt to find out what that accomplished. Oh. Did I just totally bypass the puzzle by flying over the gate instead of lowering it and then going in there? If so, that's pretty funny. All right, prison key, away. All right, and we have a caged bug and a save point. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and hit up the save point. And I'm going to do what we talked about. I'm going to go into the bestiary and start reading off some of the funny and or interesting ones that I found for the last little bit of the episode. Thought I would put these at the end, so just in case if someone didn't care, they could just go ahead and skip it. So, Golden Seedling, this is the first one. The infamous Golden Seedling shows up in tales across generations despite its rarity. Said to bring the best of luck and wealth to those who find it, many have extended their time and savings hunting for them. Despite its appearance, it is nimble and powerful. One must take great care when going for the prize. These notes, whoa, a golden seedling, their tangy berries sell for dozens. <laughs> we're gonna be rich. What, what's this defense? Only my first hit's working. We've gotta find a way to stop it. Incredible, this is the golden seedling of legends. It brings fortune, health, and love if one can best it. It has unholy defenses. Not even my piercing horn is going through. I need to think of a way to prevent its escape while we whittle it down. So this is a golden seedling. Such inviting colors and cute demeanor. We'll be blessed to capture and raise one, hmm? It's resisting even our ice magic, so it's powerful too. So yeah, I thought that one just provided some background on the golden seedlings, and I also thought the three characters had some interesting uh, reactions to it, like Leif wanting to keep it as a pet, and V wanting to get rich off of it. So the next one hasn't isn't for quite a while. Most of the normal enemies I didn't find too terribly interesting, unless they were specifically an entire species. Like, midges were kind of interesting. But I think we've read this before, said to be a distant rel relative of mosquitoes, but making that comparison is a quick way to get in a fight. And they hunt in packs, and yeah. So, I didn't put stuff like that down, but for example, the next one is 24, I mean 25. So there's actually three here. And the reason I picked these three out is because we actually learn what these are. So this one, for example, no idea what it was. Now that I look at it, I realize it's a dragonfly. These dragonfly thieves lurk within the Lost Sands. The buzz their wings produce while flying hinders their sneakiness, yet they, their mug tackle is 100% effective. Voted the cutest members of the Desert Bandits, the other members make sure the dragonflies eat first during times of scarcity, which is adorable. These notes. A thief? There's nothing worse in the world than urge to steal my hard-earned treasure. I'm gonna knock him out of the air and take everything he's stolen. Darn, that flying thief keeps stealing my favorite snacks, and I can't reach him at all. Quick, team, we must defeat him before he uses them for himself. Adorable. We've never seen a flying thief before. He steals food before anything else. Maybe if we give him enough of Kabu's snacks, he will join us? Let's defeat him quickly. And on to the second one, which is a cricket. These cricket bandits spark fear amongst all caravans traveling through the harsh desert. They are ruthless and efficient, and they have no intent to negotiate. They change completely when amongst their brethren. They act like older siblings to the dragonflies and even enjoy gardening. How adorable, once again. See, we, we didn't appreciate the bandits the first time we saw them. They're just an adorable little group just trying to get by in life. These notes. Eep, it's a bandit. I'm not going to let him get near our bag. No way. Maybe I'll just let Kabu take the hits while I throw my beamerang at him. But wait, what if they steal my beamerang? I hope I'm not worrying too much. Hum, a cricket bandit. It's been a long time since we've encountered each other. Be ready, you rascal. My strength is far greater than you remember. So this is a bandit. Can't say we've seen one before. Times must have gotten rough. As long as we deal with him quickly, we have no need to worry over our possessions. Let's freeze it in its tracks. Phew. A lot of talking here. All right, so the last one, Burglar. This is not the last in my list, by the way, but the last of these group, this group. These ladybugs turn to crime after their exile. 
doing little to improve their already poor reputation. They still dream of returning to the Ant Kingdom despite their crimes. It's undeniable, however, that their actions only make that dream stay stray further away. Ugh, this is bad. Burglars are the worst. I can't believe how fast they can tackle being so big. They're tough and good at stealing, too. I hate them. Let's finish this quick. This burglar, must he be like this? Have ladybugs not been tarnished enough? We can't afford to feel sorry for him, though, for he is fast and strong. We must stay firm and fight back. Burglars. It's a shame how Bagaria seems so unsafe these days. We won't show mercy. We'll teach them a lesson they won't soon forget. So the reason I picked this one out is because this actually provides some background on ladybugs, because they were exiled from the Ant Kingdom, and I mean, it makes sense that a lot of them would turn to banditry. Like, what, what other choice do they have? I mean, I guess they could go possibly to the Termite Kingdom, although I wonder if there's a ban there as well, or the Wasp Kingdom. But the Wasp Kingdom doesn't seem like it's doing too well right now. It seems a bit fascist-y. So, yeah, I thought that provided an interesting bit of lore, and one more for this episode, why not? The Haunted Cloth. I really just picked this one out over the Wardens and the Crawlers just because I was the most interested in it, of the enemies in that area. And it has a pretty simple description, but I thought it was neat to provide some background, nevertheless. Running off the energy of ancient crystals, this being reacts to noise and movement. It seeks to incapacitate scavengers and absorb their energy as a backup energy reserve. Get off, get off me! Jeez, this thing's got issues. We can't let it get too close, so I'd best get smacking. It worries me how, I am, how used I am to seeing abominations. Wait, it worries me how used I am becoming to abominations such as these. It is strong, but we are stronger. Let's do this. This thing thirsts for energy. We can feel its desire for our magic. But we're not eager to share. Time to bring it down. So yeah, I thought this may be a good way to kind of put into perspective some of the things we've seen. It might have been better to do it in the air episodes where they appeared, but that might have also slowed the videos down, so... I don't really mind doing it this way. Maybe we'll set a goal of doing five of these an episode. So that's five right there. So with that, I hope you have enjoyed our little lore lesson, and I will see you next time.